So let's get to it. Uh, today we wanted to discuss Civil War. Right? Yes. Okay. Well, first in the comic book version. Now, granted, I haven't read the comic book version in their entirety. I'll just start by saying that. Okay. Well, uh, it was my understanding that when it came to the prison and the, I guess, detainment center of superpowered individuals, be it supernatural or mutation or what have you that it was constructed with the inclusion of the fantastic fours mr fantastic the, that's the only thing the cube? I, there you go yes okay yeah i heard about but that. with that being said i'm on captain america's side uh, mostly because i was a huge fan of spider-man as a child and with great power comes great responsibility and personally, just on a personal note, I don't believe that the UN or the government in general has the right to tell me or anyone that they shouldn't do the right thing. If it is within your power to save lives and to do the right thing, then by all means, do the right thing. Captain America stood for that with me. As much as I love Iron Man, I love the tech, I love the personality of the character of Robbie Downey Jr. In Civil War, he was wrong. But I still don't get why you're on Captain America's side. Is it because he's a hero of yours since you grew up? Or is it because you believe in his position on this issue? I heard you said you don't like any government dictating people's actions. Is that the reason why you're on Captain America's side? You're the short of it is yes. But I'm on Captain America's side because I don't agree with the Sokovia Accords. Okay, some people got hurt and that's what it was. And yes, there is collateral damage when it comes to war. And it's unfortunate. I'm not saying it's not. But at the same time, what would have happened had the Captain America and the Avengers not acted? Had Ultron showed up, what happens if the Sokovia Accords would have said, well, let's see where this goes. Maybe we can reason with them. It is my position and it's my understanding when it comes to the bureaucracy that action is not something they take. They view conversation as action. They want to debate and let's make sure everybody comes to an understanding about what needs to be done. And while everybody's coming to an understanding about what needs to be done, nothing is physically getting done. And when I look at the Sokovia Accords, I think, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. A character like Crossbow or Thanos or you know um ultron is going to show up and start doing some ugly stuff and while things are getting ugly the un is going to sit around and go okay guys do we deploy the avengers uh, it looks like an avenger situation and there will always be one or two holdouts going well why is he doing this there's always that air quote quotation smart person in the room who wants to ask the question why is ultron doing this why is thanos doing this why is ISIS doing this? Can we reason with this person? No, you can't reason with the villain. Go after the villain and do what needs to be done because they're ending human lives. But while you're sitting around debating that, more people are dying. Okay. When the Avengers acted independently, yes, people die. Let Yes, people get hurt. But personally, I think that the number of people who get hurt, and I hate to reduce casualty figures down to facts and figures and numbers, but when the Avengers act independently, it is a net gain for how many people are saved. Okay. So your position is a pretty simple one. If the UN is put in charge of deciding when the Avengers can deploy or not deploy, people will get hurt. Their slow movement of government bureaucracy will slow the Avengers down from saving lives. Is that your position? Um, one of, but yes, the main point. Okay. All right. Uh, now, I would disagree with you because it didn't happen in the movies. The Sokovia Accords uh, didn't go forward to, to see your point of view that their bureaucracy would slow down the Avengers' progress of saving people's lives. All right. But the main thing here is that we're talking about the UN. And the UN, in the movie, uh, they, as Sam Wilson stated, is over 100 countries. Okay, so a hundred countries have the right to dictate their laws. They're, these countries that we're talking about are sovereign nations. They can dictate who stays and who goes, how things are conducted in their laws. 
no person outside of their country has a right to dictate how their laws should be made or unmade. Captain America is yeah. Captain uh, Nigeria, which is where this incident took place. Sokovia, Nigeria. Uh, he, right. he has no say-so in how they run their country. I don't care if mm-hmm. Thanos is there or not. If they don't want you in their country, then they have a right to say, no, stay out. Just the same way, like, use a little bit of real life here, the same way America has a right to t- tell an immigrant who wants to come in this country, you can't come in this country here illegally. You must go through the proper procedure because that's our laws. We dictate how laws go. I would just say I am 100% in agreement with that, but at the same time, you go by a person by person basis. If they want to arrest Captain America, if they want to put, uh, you know, they want to put a warrant out for his arrest because he came into the country illegally and took action, then so be it. But to say, but to say, and, and that goes for any country with any hero, but to say that oh, we're going to come up with this whole signed document and register all the superheroes and now everybody has to wait on our go-ahead to go and take action. That's where you draw the line. Honestly, that's where I draw the line. If Nigeria wanted to request Captain America's help, great. If they didn't request it and he took it upon himself, also great. If they want to issue a warrant for his arrest because he showed up and did his thing with Black Widow and uh, who else? can't remember who else was there. It's been a while since I saw okay, it. But Sam Wilson, <laughs> Black Widow, uh, Wanda. Right. Uh, if, he, if, they want to issue a, if they want to issue yeah. an arrest for those four, after the fact, also great. And if the country that they reside in wants to extradite them to send them to trial so that they may defend their position in the court of law, also great. But to say that now... You who have been an individual who has been gifted with an ability and has taken it upon themselves to save lives must now register and say, okay, I am because for me, when I hear register, I think, okay, by registering, that makes Captain America the property of the U.N. What happens when the U.N. wants to deploy Captain America and he doesn't agree? What happens then? Everybody wants to say, oh, well, he wants to go and they don't want him to go. But what happens when he doesn't want to go? Okay, what that, happens that, that's a good point, good question. And I, I think I can address that to where I can convince you that my side is right. My side, Team Iron Man is right. And your side, Captain America, is wrong. Oftentimes, not mostly in this movie, but in other Captain America movies starring Chris Evans, he calls himself a soldier, right? So... I looked up the word soldier because I'm not a soldier. I don't have experience being a soldier. And a soldier is someone who follows orders. They give up their freedom when they sign a document saying, okay, now I want to be part of the service, in this case, the Army. And I'm not talking about when I say freedom, I mean uh, free time. I'm talking about freedom where you get to make decisions on your own. They give up their freedom to live in a dictatorial-like atmosphere where someone else tells them what to do, and they do it. You don't get to play both sides of the aisle. If you want to be a politician, then take off the uniform. You can use your years of uh, public service as an officer to help you become a politician, and then you can affect policy. But when you're a soldier, you don't get to choose policy. See, and I agree with that in the sense that he was a soldier. Now, let's, let's take that, and I hate to break it down into you know, ifs and buts and, you know, coconuts and such. But let's just say he was a soldier. That was World War II. And he did his term of service. He did his term of service. And if I recall correctly, that ended it with him putting a aircraft down into an ice, into, you know, icebergs. Right, right. right. That was the, as far as I'm concerned, that was the official end of his U.S. government military terms of service. That was the end of his contract. I mean, did he die? ended up no but the fact is is he wasn't around to re-sign or re-enlist for another four for another six That's for another 20. So, okay let's stop right there you don't see the avengers as soldiers because they're not really wearing the military uniform of an actual american soldier uh the they're only wearing their own street clothes is... and appear as civilians um right and, and captain america to be fair to your point 
he doesn't mention the word soldier as much in this film, but he has in, let's say, Captain America Winter Soldier. He one time said in that movie, and this is a spoiler for that movie, uh, in case, I'm, I'm sure you saw it, but many haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, he said, if you want to fight a war, you got to wear a uniform. So I just took it at uh, based on what he, the character said. He sees himself as a soldier. If that's the case, that's fine. But if he wants to be a soldier for the military, that's where the confusion is. Then a soldier follows orders. They don't get to dictate policy. Correct. I understand in the MCU and in the movies why they would go against Captain America. So I get that. On top of that, I don't see Captain America as a soldier. Let me just address that. I don't see him as a soldier because when you say soldier, you talk about contracts and terms. You know, terms of service. And he already served so, his term. He already served his term. As far as I'm concerned, he is a warrior now. Which in today's in today's society, especially military society, we like to call our soldiers warriors, but there is a difference. A warrior will always fight for what he believes in. A soldier will fight for king and country, so to speak. Okay, okay. There's nothing to do either, but there is a difference. Okay, so I can't part with you on that point, but there's still the other point of the fact that this is another country we're talking about. Actually, a hundred countries. So when you say government, it's not a government. It's several nations, what we call the United Nations, that have come together and said, hey, we can't, you, we can't let you sneak in our borders uh, because when you're not, Amer- you're not part of our society, you're a foreigner. And two, you're coming here without our permission. It's our home. It's the same way, same thing as if you own a house and someone just comes in all willy-nilly like they own it. <laughs> it's not their house. Yeah. Someone from the outside is like, it's your house. You get to dictate how your house runs. Now, let's say, for instance, I have a home. It's a very nice home. I'm the king of my home, so to speak, right? Right. Now, if for whatever reason, my neighbor next door or the neighbor down the street wherever it within earshot will say he abuses his family he beats his wife he beats his kids it's it's a big it's a big ugly mess it's a problem right, right? It's a situation okay going on there yes it's a situation going on there now let's say that i have the ability to put an end to this i do i have an ability because i live in a nice home i am very stockpiled with weapons now in our society today, we're looking at America versus North Korea, or we'll see how that works out with talks in real life. But the reason why America couldn't go over there is because as much as I have the weapons, the guy next door is going, yeah, I got weapons too. And I'll mess all your shit up too. So it's like, mm, mm, we're kind of at a stalemate here. But in the sense of Captain America and Nigeria, this guy is, things are going wild at my neighbor's house. And it's not not even my neighbor's fault. Let's just say somebody broke into the house, which was the case. Someone broke into my neighbor's home and was terrorizing my neighbor. Now, if I don't go in there and put an end to this, I won't say that I am as bad as the person doing it, but it is my responsibility as being the neighbor, being the armed one, being the one with the moral high ground along with being armed, I have to, I have an obligation to go and help my neighbor to stop them from being brutalized by whoever broke into their home. That's my obligation. If I don't do that, sure, no one's going to blame me. No one's going to say, oh, well, you should have done that. Maybe some, maybe some cynics will, but realistically, I can always fall back on not my home. But at the same time, I have an obligation as a, we'll just say as a good neighbor. Okay. I do. I have an obligation as a good neighbor. If someone breaks into my neighbor's home and starts brutalizing my neighbor and I have the ability to save them, what kind of person am I if I decide, oh, well, let me discuss this with the rest of the neighborhood. Let me okay. go over to my other neighbor and say, hey, you know, such and such got their house broken into. I think they're being raped and murdered in there. Do you think we should do something? You think it's okay if I go and do something? Yeah. Uh-huh. My other neighbors look at me like I'm a crazy person. Why are you talking to me? Go over there and do something. If it's my house, Nash, and you're the you're the hero, but changing the equation a little bit, I wouldn't mind you coming in to help me out because I know you. I give you that permission. But 
one country is dictating terms about their nation, their sovereign nation, the sovereign nation laws. And the laws that they set is as follows. For at least Captain America, you can't come over here unless we say so. Yes, 100 countries did agree. And personally, I see the reason why, with all the countries in agreement with that, I don't see the reason why there needs to be a registration. And then, on top of that, why there needs to be a prison. Okay. 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 Wait a minute. I understand why it happened. We, I talked about this before, but I didn't go in great detail. Why it happens because actions have consequences. The Avenger deployed in Sokovia, and as a result, an innocent child got hurt. I don't think they contacted the officials of Nigeria that they were coming. Usually, members in the, in the security business with regards to S.H.I.E.L.D. and maybe even the Avengers, they don't typically warn people they're coming. What they should have done was warn the officials, or at the very least, warn the authorities of that country to c declare the civilians out of the danger zone area that they're about to deploy. They didn't because there was a whole lot of civilians in that city where they were engaging in a firefight with crossbows. I would think that that was probably would be what the, the United Nations was probably leading to with these Sokovia courts. Right. That they want safety for their people. And this document was probably to do that to uh, create a safe environment for their people. I mean, yes, I understand this. I understand the motivation. I get it. I do. It, realistically, it starts to fall back where I, where it falls apart for me personally, where it falls apart for me and what made me go, yeah, Team Captain America, is you're stripping Captain America and the rest of these, quote, heroes of their freedoms. If you want, if they want to go, if Captain America or Iron Man or Iron Patriot or whoever, Iron Patriot is a soldier, but if the rest of them want to go, since, I mean, the same thing happened in the first Iron Man movie. He had no authorization to go over to the Middle East and end those terrorists because he escaped and he got home. Fine. You're home. Build your Iron Man armor and wait for trouble. Nope, he built an Iron Man armor, flew right back to the Middle East, and straight up ended some terrorists. You're referring to Iron Man movie one, right? The one that started all the MCU. Yeah, movie one. He went right back to where he was Spoilers. with Mark II or with the with the Mark II armor. Right. And straight up ended a bunch of terrorists. Right. No remorse. And no one said any no one cared. I think the difference here is that now it's Captain America. Now the Avengers are being viewed as a force, as more than one individual, and now they want to rein them in. Which, hey, I get it, but at the same time, I think it comes from a position of fear within the bureaucracy of the government. Because they see it as we better control them before they decide we are the new we are the new founding fathers to quote the purge and all that and be like, Yeah, now we run this because we're the super powered ones. I see that as one of their motivations. They've never said it. I just see it as kind of a reasonable, uh, just reasonably going off of what could happen. At the same time, I don't agree that you need to strip Captain America, Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Witch. You don't strip them of their, you know, autonomy to say, to, do, to make sure other people feel safe. And I say feel safe because realistically, you're not safe. None of us are. In America, in Nigeria, in South Korea, North Korea, no one is 100% safe. Safety is an illusion. And especially in movies like the MCU, I mean, look at people who live in New York. They all believe they're safe, and then the Chitauri showed up. No one is safe. It's just not a thing. So what is it they're trying to do? Documents stripping them of their individual, of their autonomy, to give more of the illusion of safety, it's not okay. You want to arrest Captain America because he showed up in Nigeria and did his thing? Fine. Because in innocent life, if you want to hold Captain America responsible for the loss of innocent lives as an individual, that's fine. If you want to, if you want to arrest Iron Man because he went over to the Middle East and started murdering people with his new Mark armor, Again, fine. I'm not opposed to that at all. But you can't say without just cause that, okay, well, something happened and we're not charging you for this. 
they didn't charge Captain America for Nigeria, but now they're like, but we we're going to strip you of your autonomy and your freedom as if we charged you. Charge him, run him through the court system. If he gets caught, if he has to be extradited, if the United States agrees to extradite Captain America after the fact, sure. But you can't just start taking away autonomy. And the Sokovia Accords would have made it so that not only these individuals, but let's say in the MCU universe, the version of me that's there decides, hey, I created some kind of cool superpowered bullshit. Now... <laughs> I, now I have to be registered too because I showed up on YouTube like check it out I made this thing and they're like oh I'm gonna be a superhero they're like oh well before you become a superhero make sure to go to the DMV and register and we'll we'll give you your assignments okay then why am I doing it why am I doing it like think about Spider Man think about Spider Man if Spider Man has to register and then he's off doing assignments he, he violated the Sokovia Accords on the basic level and he wasn't even really part of it. He was being given assignments by Tony Stark, minor things, and he hated it. Then when real criminals showed up, he was told to stand down. What do you think Captain America is going to do? Captain America would not stand down. If the, if you showed up, hey, this is a thing in you know, Afghanistan, and they're like, yeah, we know. I can go help. Now nah, you're good. Stay here. No, okay. seriously, I can, I can help. And they're like, no, don't intervene. You know what it reminded me of? And it reminds me of the comics with the other, with with the X-Men comics, with the, the Mutant Registration Act. But it, it, it reminds me of that. And I, the only thing I could think during the Civil War movie was, okay, we're talking about what Captain America, Scarlet Witch, you know, the, the four of them, they did with Crossbones in Nigeria. And Iron Man was, and Iron Patriot were very willing to just go, yep, yeah, that's cool. We're good with that. I don't feel like this was going to come up in this movie conversation uh, about the Mutant Registration Act. In the comic books, it's kind of weird. They had that, too, in there. But when it comes to normal superheroes with powers, no one really had a huge problem with it in comparison to mutants with powers. It's really weird. I, I don't know how they balance the two out in the comic books. But, but see, it's one of those things where I kept thinking, the only thing I was thinking when I saw that was, what if Iron Man decided, nah, this isn't fair. Iron Man had the power to disable or to, you know, take apart their entire argument by simply saying, it's not fair. It's not fair. I don't have to reg. I should not have to register because Captain America messed up. It's something that people are dealing with to this day with different things, you know. I mean, look at California and our car laws. You know, we can't have certain engines. We can't do certain modifications because some jerk messed up. You know, it, it is what it is. And it's just kind of, it's getting to a point in our real life that it's, it's bordering on ridiculous. I think that in the MCU universe, all that really needs to be done is for the United States to say, if Captain America or any of our superpowered individuals, whoever they may be, commits a an act of heroism or a crime, in a foreign nation and the loss of civilian life occurs, we agree to extradite said individuals. And the other countries can say, hey, if you're coming over here, because the Avengers are still an organization, they can send a letter saying, hey, if you're coming over here, if you're sending one of your people, let our security forces know so that we can do what we can to save human life. Yeah, okay. He doesn't trust the yeah. leaders calling the shots. I remember hearing that line from him because people have alternate he agendas doesn't. that may conflict with your yeah. own. I, I remember that line. I do respect that. I, I understand that. I understand that point of view and I can respect that. And the only thing I can't respect is you invading someone else's home without their permission, especially when they say no. I gotta go. <laughs> so next week, same time? Same time. I'm good with this. Okay. Uh, look forward to it. Take care. Great. Buddy. Take care.